Hi, and welcome to The Scoop. This week, I have a good friend, an international entrepreneur, an ICT activist, and someone who's fondly referred to as Addis Hilton. All the way from Ethiopia, Sophia Bekele. Sophia, it's great to have you here. Thank you very much for coming. Pleasure it's lovely to, to see you as always. Pleasure, pleasure to be here in Kenya. I would say welcome <coughs> to Kenya, but actually you spend a lot of time in Kenya. Mainly. It's become my second home after Addis Ababa. And what do you do here? Uh, I have set up a, an initiative here a few years back, about three years ago, um, uh, doing a pan-African project uh, to actually rebrand Africa. It is under the uh, name of Dot Connect Africa, mm -hmm. and uh, it's an initiative that started almost six years ago outside the U.S. actually, but then I sort of uh, campaigned for it. I, you must have heard about the Yes to Dot Africa campaign that was very popular, and we got a lot of. Uh, but what's credit what's for the it. branding <clears throat> purpose? I mean, why why are we rebranding Africa on well, an ICT level? The ICT level. The Dot Africa brand actually allows uh, Africans who are producing products and services locally mm -hmm. to actually participate in the global uh, uh, world in terms of sh showing what they can do. Like, for example, I've always used the, if you're a producer of shoes, instead of using the identity uh, when you create a website. So where do people go? They usually go to a .com registrar mm -hmm. in the US or a .org or a .com if it's a commercial. Uh, they register uh, their name. And that is a US-based company or European-based mm. company wanted, that actually sells that. You want it to be I, Africa. I want it to be a Pan-African identity and I mm -hmm. want it to be the registry here so that people pay an African company and not a US company. So the profits that resonates the from continent. this stay in the continent and it uh, subsidizes uh, the economy. Do you think it'll be difficult for people to find dot .Africa as, as a domain or, or dot .Asia? Because everyone is so used to dot .com, dot .co, dot .ke, or not dot after New the seven-year campaign we have for it for to popularize it. Really? So a lot of, of people, a lot of people, people are will, yeah, anticipating you, when you yeah, They are anticipating. The campaign mm -hmm. was for that. And now when you launch it, actually, people um, you would still do more campaign, you know, mm. just like Safaricom has done a great job of campaign for, for the M-Pesa, right? Mm. But it will be a pan-African level. And, you know, the whole industry is being prepared with the like the GoDaddies and, mm. and so forth. We'll have many African GoDaddies to actually sell mm. to uh, the local uh, consumer. And it will be televised, it will be on the internet, it will be on your face. So you are, you will be able to uh, have the option of Dar Africa. And, our campaign shows the little guys who don't even own business are excited about Dor Africa, let alone. Um, so Dor Africa as a level. whole, as a whole <clears throat> African um, a domain or dot Kenya, dot Ethiopia, dot Tanzania. No, no, will no. that be the branches of Dot Africa, or well, will yeah. we all be Dot Africa? Well, uh, no, 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 no. Absolutely, uh, everybody has a right to retain their local identity, mm -hmm. national identity. So you can have a dot. Uh, KE, the current one. Mm -hmm. For example, you have a KE here when you register a lot of the local businesses instead of going. But it's very expensive. It's like mm -hmm. $50 mm -hmm. versus a mm -hmm. dot Africa will be a $10 option. Okay. So there is economic transition people will do. And also there is uh, identity like on our business card, if you see, which we take for granted, we have Kenya, Africa, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you print. So this is like KE, and dot Africa. Africa. So you could have the okay. option of having that. Okay. So people will show nationality Your, as well. As so a great thing to bring the continent together and to give us an, a sense of, 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 uh, of a pan-African identity. You and your identity, you're Ethiopian. Mm -hmm. um, you were born in Ethiopia? Yes, born and raised. Born and raised. Um, during a very difficult time. Tell me a little bit about your childhood in terms of growing up under um, a, a revolution, a, a revolutionary government, and I'll right. put revolution in in, in inverted commas. Right. Uh, but the Derg regime was a was a was a was a tough time for Ethiopia. Yeah. Um, how was it growing up there? Very interesting. I look back now; it's over. But I I would say it it taught us a lot. Um, I've seen I saw a lot of blood on the street. It was. There was a lot of violence in the school I went to, a private school. Um, we didn't think this would happen. It came, like it erupted, and uh, 
So you so, were targeted as being because course. you were going to this school and yeah, yeah, being we upper are, class. Yeah, yeah. You were targeted, targeted by the by the people. Right. This is uprising of the uh, the whole communism, right? Mm. So it was a class struggle. So uh, the uprising of the masses mm. against the bourgeoisie. Our properties were taken. Um, my mm. father was an entrepreneur at that time. He used to work for the Haile Selassie, um, um, Emperor Haile Selassie's regime when he was there, but he turned into an entrepreneur. Um, after that, uh, a big farm and, 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 you know, dairy production. So he was also in the uh, service industry. So uh, we had a huge house in the suburbs, uh, which the Dirk has come and said, you know, this is uh, too much for five children. And, and so there was a, a time of chaos. And imagine being my father who will wake up every morning and not only try to protect his family, but not trying to be in prison as a result of having the wealth he's created. And is he still, is he still alive, your father? No, my father passed away six years ago. And your mom? My mom is still there. She is a qualified nurse. Uh, she's retired. Mm -hmm. She lives between her home in US and Ethiopia. So she's shuttles like me. And did your um, father ever <clears throat> want to move? I mean, was that- No, did they, he ever, the family he ever, never, never wanted, wanted to, to move. They loved Ethiopia. It was chaos time. They sent us out all to school in the United States. Mm -hmm. Um, so to avoid danger, obviously, and we were, that's the reason we actually went to the U.S. I think we would have probably been educated mm. through the regular system if we were there. But um, they lived and they survived. You did much Family more did. than just ICT and technology in the U.S. And we're going to talk about that when we come back from this break. And we're back with Sophia Bekele, and we're talking about her time in the United States. Sophia, you went to study, but I hear you did a lot more than studying. You um, were a model. Uh, can you tell me about, a little bit about that modeling career and why it's cut short? Why it's cut short? Because I'm growing older, that's why it's cut short. Well, then, you know, <laughs> it's gotta cut. You... It's gotta be cut somewhere. <laughs> but, you know, I grew up in Ethiopia where voluptuous women were uh, the attraction for men and in and, and general and then I was a very skinny girl mm -hmm. and when I went to the US and somebody finds like okay great um, you be a model and I'm like oh really mm. I'm, you know it's like oh wow what a change uh, now I'm you know I'm in an industry where I could at least uh, uh, feel attractive it was great it was I had a great experience it was fashion for me it was more about fashion Obviously, the whole industry is different. I was doing my uh, studies. I was more of mm. a studios person, and I grew up as a, for, from a conservative family that uh, celebrated education, not necessarily. Oh, that's after. what I was going to ask yeah, you. Yeah. That the Ethiopians yeah, yeah. are also quite conservative. Yes, yes. Um, and, so, and so, so what, did your, what did your parents think about you modeling? They knew I would never get distracted from the serious career I was pursuing, mm. and it never did, actually. I started my career in the auditing industry a very conservative field, uh, mm. in a banking as well, another conservative mm. field. And so this was like my sidekick, um, like anybody will play golf or, or um, tennis. And I started and Did you model it for like, any of the big brands? Yes, I, mean, I did. I did uh, the Macy's fashion shows and Nordstrom. And uh, mm. it introduced me to Paris. So I used mm -hmm. to come in uh, January, the shows in Paris. Uh, I never did anything in New York. Uh, but of course, I was also limited by the fact that I was working at that time, uh, serious jobs. Mm. And so it was in between uh, work that I was doing this. So it was really a gig. It keeps me balanced. I'm, I was happier. I was not just an auditor. I had an outlet where I could do something different. And I, I, I loved fashion. So I it was fashionable. We went to great parties, you know, different people. Mm. So it kept me in a balance. Uh, and so I enjoyed it for so and long. It's such a contrast to... ICT and technology, you have this impression of it being sort of these geeky, you know, little geeks sitting with glasses sitting behind computers. Um, and yet, you know, here you are, this glamorous fashion model <laughs> that is also doing technology and ICT and studying and, and training in that. Was that, you know, was, it, was did you find that a contrast? Actually, ICT just came in the way I was really a model. The, the, <laughs> I, the ICT was a side business. Yeah, they actually, so that was forced upon me. Yeah. Uh, no, it, I, I, uh, somehow, these part of um, uh, glamour world uh, took me the path of 
maybe that's how I brought Dot Africa or the branding. Every time I start a company, and I'm a, I've been called serial entrepreneur, mm. this is like fourth or fifth company I'm doing now. Uh, I was very good at the branding or, or, or the communication side. Mm. There are two things that came out of my career in, in auditing. One was, you know, if you are an auditor, you question things. That's part of your job. You actually go out to question what people do. You're not so friendly. I mean, you're, you're not the friendliest person. So people don't really socialize yeah, with you. Auditors, yeah, yeah you hate auditors, right? And lawyers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And lawyers. I don't know. Yeah. Lawyers are yeah, more same powerful. Thing. I mean, it's just, yeah, yeah, same thing. Huh? Same thing. So, Take you know what? I, t I took rejection very comfortably. Hmm. I, 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 I'm not into being loved. Uh, as long as you respect me, I'm happy. But, but that's a contrast. As a model, you want to be loved. I mean, that's part of that modeling issue. You need to be loved in the sense As, that, that you want people to look at you. Though, but that was pure aesthetic. We used to do a lot of go-tos, right? And go-tos means mm. that, you know, the agent would say, oh, there is a go-to, you go there. And you go to and get assessed. Mm. It, it wasn't personality assessment. It was purely on aesthetics, looks. Yeah. yeah. You had to be a certain size, you have to be, mm. you know, la la la, and walk, can you walk uh, right. confidently? The most arrogant, actually, I used to be told, why aren't you more arrogant on the runway? Mm. Because you can't smile so much. So the attitude model always got the job. So you needed to build an so attitude. So it's almost perfect for auditing. It's almost I perfect mean, for auditing. You can and use your looks <laughs> to get into a firm, <laughs> uh, you know, and get them comfortable. Exactly. And, then you, and then you just hammer them for all their fees. Exactly. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful it's a combination. I think it's a, a very smart combination. Isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. And also, because you can get rejected at the go-to level, Mm. You take rejection very well. Mm. So you, go, you don't go with the idea of getting it. You go, you might just go there and, mm. you know, be lined up with the rest. Okay. And that happened, that, that helped you, that helped you with your, Perfect. as an entrepreneur. Because as, as, as an entrepreneur, you need to face rejection. You, rejection you, you know, you, you will get rejected. Yes. Your ideas will get laughed at a lot exactly. of the times. And you need to keep going. So is that a, I mean, is that a lesson you would have for I a have younger generation? From, the, from a young person, as a young person, when you learned rejection based on your looks or la la la, and they don't tell you, they just, you're like this, mm -mm -mm. Mm. you go. It's so is like that a lesson you give to young entrepreneurs? I will do the same. Uh, yes, I will. Rejection yeah. is part of, uh, any life, it's not only entrepreneurship, it's everything. You know, so you have to persist. You have to be above it all. People don't reject you. There, there may be their own reason. It has nothing to do with you. So you have to keep on trying and trying and trying. I will never take no for an answer in life. I will always um, go back and go back and help me. And I will, I will say the same for people, persistency. Especially when you're young, you mm. don't like to be rejected. It's such a big deal, right? As, aside um, from rejection, bad experiences, I mean, the modeling industry or that world is not known for its, for its um, uh, sometimes it's, it's, there, there's a dark side to it as well. Yes, Did is. you ever get into you know, drugs or alcohol or abuse of substances or anything like that? I grew up too much of a Christian in Ethiopia, thank God. Maybe that's what it is. I never mm. did. I like to drink wine, a couple of glasses. And after that, I can never go more. It's like almost like that. I would stretch myself to, to a point where I'm comfortable. And after that, I myself cannot do it. I cannot force myself. No peer pressure would get me there. Does the fact that you came from money and that you, 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 know, you had a fairly wealthy family background, does that help? You didn't need to do it I for money. I didn't need it for money. I never does, did does it Does having money. that need perhaps push young women to uh, no, levels that they, they don't money. need? Definitely, because a lot of the people I work with, actually, I had my MBA, which I never talked about when I was in modeling business. Mm -hmm. When I was doing that, I had my education very early in life. At 16 or something, I, I started uh, my uh, college. And so my MBA went straight. So I don't talk about it because you don't even talk about your education when you are with the modeling crowd. So you have to fit in. So you see a lot of the others desperate in trying to achieve mm -hmm something with their lives because they didn't have the backup. And I never talked about what I have in the backup. I'm just assimilating everyone. Corporate world gives you a lot in America, unlike Africa, responsibilities. So at an early stage, I was responsible for trading floors of, mm. mm, of the banks uh, between New York, or South America, and Europe. And so I traveled a lot. At that same time, I was doing modeling. So People did modeling to, to travel to see the other side of the world, and I did it on this side. So it was well, you purely call yourself for me. a serial entrepreneur, but actually you're also a serial traveler, oh. and we're going to talk about that when we come back.
And we're back with Sophia Bekele and talking about serial traveling. Sophia, according to your profiles, you've been around the world six times. Now, I'm not sure if I read it wrong, but six times is an awful lot of times. I mean, I've traveled a lot, but I've never been around the world six times. How did you do this? And, and did you go to every country? Not every country, but uh, I tell you, and I did not go for work, if that makes you any jealous. That makes me extremely <laughs> jealous. So purely, this is pure, pu yeah, pure, pure pleasure. pleasure. And it's within the span of maybe eight, nine years time. Interestingly, the first uh, around the world travel I did was after breaking off my corporate world and trying to get entrepreneurship, that my thinking time. So I had gone through Asia, Latin America, mm. and then um, obviously I winded up in Africa and start uh, my technology transfer kind of um, world. But after that, uh, there, there is a scheme Lufthansa had around the world uh, ticket they mm -hmm. would sell you. Mm -hmm. And as long as you touch three continents, it's considered around the world and you can have, you can move around. So um, Lufthansa had this, 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 is, Lufthansa yeah, had this a, scheme. Yeah, well, I didn't want to say this. This was my little secret. Um, do they still Italian. have this scheme? No, no, this secret. Do they still no, have this no, scheme? Now everybody's going to know. know. Yeah. <laughs> do I they think, still have it? I think they still do. I think really? they still do, yeah. All right, just, but it was, uh, and, I'm, and, I'm just making it yeah, here to get onto not, Lufthansa <laughs> immediately. Yeah, be happy to know that it's not uh, a backpack thing, I yeah. tell you. So I'll come back. After making one trip, I'll come back and work, do, 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 and then I will sit around and say, what country have I not seen? And I did that. I, amazingly, I did that for like within the four or five, uh, maybe about six years time, I think. But so how many countries, Sophia? Oh, I'm, I'm telling you, I would go in one trip, I would go to three continents mm -hmm. and I would probably six, seven countries, I would move around. So how many countries have you seen, have you visited oh, in your I've, life? I think I probably had uh, 100 and 10, 100 feet. Not places. just touching down at the airport and, and transiting. So no, these are actually no. places no. you've gone to I visit. I would go and visit and I dived. The sites. Yeah, and my diving career went up because I used to also uh, coordinate. Okay, diving. let's, let's, let's yeah, stop yeah. that. Diving yeah. career. And my diving career. You enjoy diving? Well, it's not career. I enjoy diving. Yeah. yeah, scuba diving. And it was great. So my trips were also sort of like I used to align them hmm. with. So you're where a proper, what do they call those paddy instructors? Yeah, yeah, paddy I'm certified. certified. I'm certified. I could go um, up to 50 meters uh, descent. So really? So it's pretty good, yeah. Again, not something that you kind of relate to young African women is a, is a love I for don't diving. Know. I, I went to Mauritius in Africa yeah. and uh, no, they were tourists. I didn't see Africans. Uh, and what and other hobbies have you got other than, uh, than your work and the modeling and now diving that I've uh, just oh, yeah. discovered? Well, what other? flying too. I, you fly I, planes? I took, I took, yeah, private, uh, I, I didn't take my private Fantastic. license because I saw the book yeah. and I said I'm already certified. I mean, I have five certification in corporate governance kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah. said I am not going to do another certification in this huge, the, uh, the FF, uh, FAA book that yes. uh, you have to read to get certified. But I, I flew up to 3,000 uh, feet. In, in small planes? Yeah, in small planes, small Cessna planes. planes. No, not uh, yeah. 777. Yeah. No. Any other interesting... Hobbies that, I, that, that mm, you do? No, I like the opera, my favorite. So I like to be in US in September. For really? the opening the opera. season yeah, of the opera, wow. which is really great. I like the show, the chocolates and the champagnes and, and the clicks. Of do the you understand uh, what they're, they're singing about? Oh, uh, yeah, pain. Opera? It's always pain. It's, is it? It's okay, about okay. losing someone. Right? Is that an Ethiopian thing? You know, I like to have the pain part. Is that, <laughs> so, is that, is I know, we're is happy that, people, actually. <laughs> Ethiopians are very happy no, people. Hey, look, Ethiopia is one of what my favorite countries We have countries great in the world. poets. You know, that will cite it's, it's, uh, pain and, and pleasure, but uh, Ethiopians are uh, mm. actually like, we're like the Jamaicans. We're extremely happy people. Sophia, personal life. You have never settled down. Um, you, you know, where's the, the, is there so busy with your travels, with your, um, with your projects, with the, 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 you know, being a serial entrepreneur, time for family now? Uh, not that I'm thinking about. Uh, all those things did not hinder me, believe me. It didn't get in the way. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not say. I, um, I may have sacrificed in general terms, but it's a choice I've made. Uh, in spite of having five siblings and this really yeah. sort of um, uh, what seems like a very uh, uh, beautiful family, you never wanted to sort of have that? 
for yeah, yourself? I was so happy with my life, I didn't want to spoil it. I don't know if marriage would have spoiled it. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. But I, I just it's didn't it's believe in the marriage proposal, honestly. Mm. I've been engaged three times. Really? Yes. Okay, that's <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten close to oh, it. You see, now, you, yeah. now you're opening up a can yes. of worms here. Yes. So engaged so even, three times. Three times, even different, one Different continents? Yeah, how did you know that? <laughs> different continents, yeah. mine. Uh, and even the last one, my father had a, a big uh, party in Ethiopia for me, and we did the whole, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it? Uh, the Shemagale. Yeah, they, they bring the older uh, people to come and ask for the hand and all that. Okay. So um, that was pretty good, but I'm glad I'm not right now. Uh, no, no, hang I'm on. Just go back there. That was pretty good, but then what <laughs> the happened? The whole ceremony was oh, good. The, the it's an okay. experience. <laughs> Marriage is sort of an experience, isn't it? It's like, uh, it's like uh, almost uh, going through college or uh, going through uh, a very um, controversial project. Or mm. it's just it. I know it's like for a lifetime. You say I do, but it's sort of an experience as well. Being married. But so, but you don't have that great. experience. I mean, you've got to the engagement stage, but you don't, I don't have, have to. The, the I live through it with my friends, mm. my family. I mean, I don't. And you don't really feel you're missing anything. Absolutely, that's the real mm. point. You just said it. Mm. I don't feel I miss anything. I don't feel even mm. with children. I don't feel like I miss anything. Mm. Uh, I have and you have nieces. lots of nieces and nephews. Yes, I about that to say, I lots really of enjoy. I kind of rent them for a couple mm -hmm. of hours. Okay. And, <laughs> and yes, after two hours... The beautiful thing about nieces and nephews is you can always give them back. Exactly, yeah, and that's, that's what that's, I do. That's a wonderful thing about yeah, nieces and yeah. nephews. You can always and give them back. I enjoy my independence. The future then. Family is not obviously on that, on that not, list not immediately. On that immediately. Immediately. What is the future for Sofia Bekele? The future for Sofia Bekele is to do more of what I do to um, empower, actually, I have a new initiative to empower women, young women and, and youth. I'm into that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to lead by example. Um, when I'm invited to speak in all these different forums around the world, um, I make sure that it's the next generation I think about. It's not about Sophia anymore. I think I've done, I have lived a full life. Um, there's so much to give, even if you don't have your own children. Uh, so I feel like we, we Africans, particularly with all the issues that we have in terms of, although Africa is a place of opportunity now and everybody's focusing on that, maybe we should take that focus and opportunity and translate it for the next generation. Uh, sort of comes with my rebrand Africa mm. theme. Um, let's show people that they can do something different that the last generation has done. Uh, sometimes it's controversial because change is controversial. And I am a person who cannot, who is not comfortable with seeing the same thing. Um, I'm a person who likes to challenge. Maybe my auditor career comes right mm -hmm. all the time, follows me. So I like to challenge things. I like to see the next generation live a better life. Africa has been uh, marginalized for a very, very long time, and that's why my focus in Africa, I like my work here, because I want to see the digital divide and, and the jump, and people's lives change quickly. I was privileged with the opportunity of going to the US, and I was able to live all this life in a very short time, experience corporate America, entrepreneurship, travel, all these things. Why? Is it, am I going to say, is it because I have given, I, I live in the Western, dream or Western lifestyle, why can't our generation, why can't the future generation of Africa have the same privileges? So, so you, you like I'm, to shake things up? You like to shake like things to up? I like to shake things up to make sure that the next generation is taken mm. care of. And I hear that there might be a book coming, that you've been working on a book. Yes. What's the book going to be talking about? The book about? is about digital Africa, mm -hmm. again, how we can uh, empower Africa through technology, mm -hmm. through rebranding. I, I talk about uh, uh, a lot about governance. Uh, the first domain I want to, um, to register will be governance.africa because that's really what we, we lack. Mm -hmm. When we actually master governance is when we really give to the next generation. And my book is about that and my experience, sort of the, the expanded uh, experience of what I just told you now. Governance yeah. is about leadership. It's yes. about accountability. Yes. Is this a field that you would want to go into? 
I'm do we already see, there. Do I'm we see Sophia Bakele as future Prime Minister of Ethiopia? Uh, I'm not sure I will take that leadership because I will not be effective. Then I will be just changing one country. Uh, I'm interested in, in participating in the global governance, the issues of digital divide, which mm -hmm. is happening right now, internet governance, which affects billions of people, not just one nation. As you, are, you probably know in my public profile, I'm challenging African Union, mm. I'm challenging uh, the internet governance body, and I'm also challenging UN, US Congress. So these kind of challenges, given the opportunity, mm. and I think will prevail, I'm very confident, mm. Uh, these are the things that changes history and, and really impacts billions of people. And it will trickle down to Africa. Sophia, you're on the scoop. Give me a scoop. Something that nobody else knows. I'm a survivor. I'm going to win Dot Africa. And there you have the scoop, straight from Sophia Bakele, from me and the entire team of the scoop, from the Southern Sun Hotel here in Nairobi, Kenya. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. It's been pleasure. a real pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.